<laughs> Amen. Come on in. Come on in. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you again. We apologize for uh, this one's on me. Uh, for some reason, I, I got the time mixed up this time. And uh, with so many things that are happening at once, uh, sometimes that happens. Amen. But nonetheless, we're excited <clears throat> and we're grateful to God for his goodness and for his mercy. Amen. So uh, we thank the Lord for all of you uh, who are on. Uh, and we pray that God is blessing you and keeping you uh, in every area and facet of your lives. Uh, we have quite a few prayer requests and quite a few things that have uh, come in <clears throat> over the last uh, few days uh, and so we want to make sure that we are praying uh, for all of you praying with you I pray that you stay safe especially during this time if you're in the Northeast we're experiencing some fluctuating weather uh, if you're not in the Northeast if you're somewhere else uh, then you are uh, being blessed uh, by that God bless you Mr. Taylor uh, amen so again uh, we messed up on the time tonight it was on me uh, I'm doing quite a bit of writing uh, and I thought that we had set 8 o'clock and not 7.30. All right, so we'll we'll speed it up. We'll catch up right along. Uh, but please invite someone. Share with someone. God bless you, Pastor Marissa. It's on me tonight again. Uh, we had gotten mixed up with the time. I did. <laughs> and so uh, it does happen. So many things happening at one time, but God is good. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. So please, thanks for giving me uh, tonight uh, as we're getting ready. I just want you to know how grateful we are for you. Uh, we have uh, several things that I want to press in and prayer for. Uh, of course, Pastor Marissa, uh, our supervisor, uh, passed away. We're praying for her. Uh, as well as tonight, one of the reasons why I was on a little bit late uh, is because we have two very urgent prayer requests. Uh, Mother Jean Adams, uh, as well as Mother Tatum, uh, have relatives in the hospital. Uh, and so we were ministering and praying and making sure that they were covered. So uh, let's please pray for family members. Bless you. Let's please pray for those who are uh, been stricken with COVID and then also other illnesses and circumstances. We want to also keep them all lifted up in prayer as well. Amen. So again, every week with 730 is our set time. Uh, tonight we got off to a late start uh, because of me <laughs> so many other things that we were trying to tackle today uh, but we're going to jump right in so let's pray together and uh, also if you're uh, worshiping with us if you're uh, listening to this teaching tonight for bible study uh, via uh, social media uh, whether it's facebook or instagram if you would please share this uh, broadcast let others know that we are here uh, and we are ready to jump in and thank god for my lovely wife who reminded me uh, about the timing amen so we thank God for that. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for the privilege of relationship. We thank you that you are gone. And beside you, there is no other. We pray that your hand will continue to keep us, that your hand will continue to heal us, that your hand will continue to deliver us, save us, and set us free. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for the privilege of relationship. Thank you that you are our Father. Thank you for keeping us cover us wherever we may be may your hand continue to guide us heal us deliver us and save us in jesus name amen i like that we're right on god's time amen so let's jump in tonight we've been talking about the psalms we've been talking about the psalms and the psalms are the soundtrack of the soul the psalms are the soundtrack of the soul and so we want to briefly review uh some of what we have dealt with already so if you have a pen a pad if you're typing uh, texting however it is that you are communicating uh, we are going to engage one with another tonight uh, in this time of bible study this time of studying scripture and last week uh, and the week before we dealt with how to understand scripture how do we read the bible uh, and again we said by way of review that we are to read imaginatively we are to read thoughtfully, we are to read expectantly, and we are to read regularly. So we are to read imaginatively, we are to read thoughtfully, we are to read expectantly, and we are to read regularly. And we want to make sure that we reiterate that and we emphasize that 
uh, because of the particular time that we're living in. Uh, it is so, 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 so important uh, that we ground ourselves in the Word of God because the Word of God uh, gives us stability, it gives us sustenance, it gives us strength. Uh, and it is in the presence of God that we really come to understand who He is and what He is saying uh, and releasing and revealing in and through our lives so we want to start there uh, also we've been dealing with the Psalms and there are several things that we noticed as it pertains to the Psalms uh, and I want to make sure that we uh, take our time to really understand that as we unpack that uh, because there's so much uh, fruit there so much meat there that I don't want us to miss it uh, because of everything else that's been happening and going on and so we talked about uh, there are three specific types of psalms. And the first is psalms of praise. Psalms of praise. Uh, secondly, psalms of petition. Or what we also said were psalms of lament. So psalms of praise and then also psalms of petition. And then lastly, we had psalms of thanksgiving. So I want to just review that very briefly. Uh, and then we will uh, go a step further. All right. So psalms of praise. Psalms of petition, and then Psalms of thanksgiving. So Psalms of praise, Psalms of petition, and Psalms of thanksgiving. Bless you, Mama. Amen. So Psalms of praise, Psalms of petition, and Psalms of thanksgiving. Uh, and I, I think that it's so important that we understand that, that we realize that uh, because we're living in a time uh, and a time frame uh, where so much is happening at once, uh, and we have to maintain a posture of praise we have to maintain uh, the ability to uh, worship the lord to honor the lord in spite of what we go through in spite of what it looks like and in spite of what it seems or feels like so we talked about psalms of praise psalms of petition and psalms of thanksgiving so i want to go a step further today uh, and i want to look at uh, the Psalms, uh, because we're looking at Psalm 119. So let's go to Psalm 119, and we're going to uh, look at the first uh, few verses. We've been laying a foundation on it, uh, but now we'll look at uh, the first few verses. Psalm 119 uh, is literally the longest uh, chapter in the Bible. Uh, it is the longest psalm. But it's the longest chapter itself in the Bible. Psalms 119 has 176 verses. 176 verses. I often tell people whenever they tell me, and, and uh, we're, we're being a bit more informal tonight. I often tell people whenever they tell me they have trouble sleeping. I'm like, read on Psalm 119. I guarantee you, by the time you get to the 50th verse, you're going to go to sleep. Okay, so it's 176 verses. Now, it's very interesting because Psalm uh, 117, Psalm 117 is the shortest psalm. Uh, and then Psalm 119 is the longest psalm. In Psalm 117, you have two verses. And in Psalm 119, you have 176 verses. Now, we're not going to didactically work through all of that tonight. Uh, but we want to just look at the first eight verses now here's what's interesting when it comes to psalm 119 psalm 119 is very unique uh, and depending on the translation of the bible that you have uh, you will find that there are specific letters that might look unfamiliar uh, when you look at it so let's locate let's go to psalm 119 i would say turn there if you are turning or if you're scrolling that's fine psalm 119 if you look at uh, let's go with the uh, do New King James. So if you look at uh, one of those translations, it says Aleph, A-L-E-P-H, Aleph, A-L-E-P-H. So uh, it is the Aleph section. Uh, that is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, so when you look at Psalm 119, uh, meditations on the excellencies of the word of God, the first part is uh, Aleph. Uh, so the entire psalm is broken up into eight verses a piece, and each verse uh, is tied to a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, and this helps us with a word picture to understand the psalm, and it also gives us clarity in how to dissect uh, and unpack the psalm. Uh, so I want to I just uh, pause right there for just a minute. Uh, 
uh, because a lot of times uh, we see these things and we don't really understand it. And as I shared with you before, uh, the Psalms give us the ability and they give us language for prayer. I was ministering to someone on yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, the day before, uh, one of his uh, friends or mentors passed away, a uh, man of God, and uh, a young man had uh, mentioned to me that he was uh, trying to find the language to pray. And I said, there's some moments in our lives when we don't have language to pray. There's some moments in our lives when we're so grief stricken, when tragedy strikes, when uh, pain hits, when something hits that we don't anticipate and we don't expect. And it is in those kinds of moments that the Psalms speak to us. It is in those kind of moments that the Psalms minister to us. It is in those kind of moments where the Psalms give us language for the anguish, the anxiety, and even at times uh, the the annoyance of the issues that we're dealing with in our lives. Hey, I was looking for you. Uh, so it's very important for us to understand that. The Psalms give us language for the issues, uh, the vicissitudes of life. The Psalms give us the ability to uh, become human. I think that's a better way of putting it uh, because you're able to cry out to God uh, when things are going well and when things aren't going well. Uh, and uh, I love uh, several of the Psalms, uh, especially Psalm 42. Uh, I, I quote the Psalms regularly, uh, and one of which is, Why are you cast down, O my soul? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. And there'll be moments in our lives when we will feel cast down. There's moments in our lives when we f will feel disappointed. There's moments in our lives when we will feel frustrated because something happened in a way that we did not anticipate. And so the Psalms give us that ability. They give us the ability uh, to develop a prayer, a prayer language. They give us the ability to develop uh, maturity in our communication, maturity in our dialogue with God, maturity as a He's doing in and through our lives. So we are in Psalm 119. And Psalm 119 is the longest uh, chapter in the Bible. But it's broken up again uh, into uh, literally eight verses. And each of these eight verses, again, each of these eight verses point us uh, to a Hebrew letter, a word picture that enable us to understand the psalm better. So, Psalm 119, <clears throat> verses 1 through 8. And this is referred to as the Aleph section of the Psalms. And what is the Aleph section of the Psalms? The Aleph section of the Psalms simply means that these are Psalms that are at the beginning. All right, this letter speaks of the beginning. So we're dealing with the beginning. Okay, so let's look at what it says here. All right, so we're looking uh, at verse number one, and there's some things about it that it helps us with. So Psalm 119, for those of you coming in, bless you guys, good to see you. Psalms 119, as we're coming together in it, uh, we're looking at uh, several and significant things uh, that enable us to grow in Scripture. Uh, and as I shared already, uh, there are moments in our lives in which we don't know what to say. And the Psalms give us language for prayer, give us language for our lives, uh, especially when you're trying to grapple with what's the right thing to say in the right moment. OK, so we're going to start there very practically it's Tuesday night. We kind of uh, bring it at a more practical level, uh, just sharing with you uh, in that way for Bible study. So Psalm 119, verse number one, OK, uh, says, blessed are the undefiled in the way. Um, who walk in the law of the Lord. Uh, New Revised says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who, blessed are those who keep his decrees, or who keep his testimonies, <clears throat> who seek him with their whole heart. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees, who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. So before we even make a move, we already have something to pray here. 
He says, blessed are those, blessed are the undefiled in the way. So blessed are those whose way is blameless. Blessed are those who walk in the ways of God, who live in the ways of God. So this, this, this passage here is a heart check. Okay. Uh, this passage here is a heart check and it enables us to understand uh, that we have to walk in the ways of God. We have to seek the face of God and we also have to understand uh, the hand of God uh, and what he is saying in and through our lives. Okay. So I want to start right there. I want to start right there. So this deals with this deals with the behavior of the blessed. And I think that that's really what I want to uh, title our lesson for tonight. The behavior of the blessed. Okay. Uh, in Psalm 119, in these first eight verses, there are several things we see. The first thing we see is blessed conduct. Blessed conduct. Blessed conduct. How we conduct ourselves how we carry ourselves how we convey that which we believe that which god has given us so we see blessed conduct blessed conduct and when we understand psalm 119 which i'm going to track with me so far we understand psalm 119 uh, it's allowing us to know the importance of the word of god in our lives when something is important when something is important uh, we make time for it I don't care how busy your schedule is when something is important we make time for it uh, whether it's a show whether it's been watching binge watching something that we've been waiting to, to show up uh, whether it's uh, a loved one whether it's a friendship whether it's a relationship uh, whenever there's something that we value we prioritize it. We make time for it. And so when it comes to blessed conduct, uh, we have to prioritize uh, the presence of God, uh, the purposes of God, uh, and the person of Christ in our lives. So, as I said, Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible, longest chapter in the Bible. Okay, it's divided into 22 parts. And so each of these letters has a way of teaching us how to honor God. So the essence of this chapter is respect, praise, and honor for the word of God. Now, the word of God is mentioned in several ways here. Notice in verse number one, it says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Who walks in the law of the Lord. If you have the Bible app, I would say highlight that verse. Uh, if you're reading it, uh, you can just make note of it. All right. But who walk in the law of the Lord. So they use the terminology law for also understanding God's word. And a lot of times when we hear the word law today, we think of legalism or we think of some kind of bad thing. You know, don't break the law. Don't violate the law. But the law in this terminology here is actually a good thing. Because law is a law is non-binding it is established uh, it is decreed uh, it has to be carried out uh, if we were living in medieval times when a king or a queen made a decree it could not be erased it could not be revoked well we in the kingdom of god are under a theocratic or even a uh, christocratic or christ-centered rule jesus is the lord of the church Amen. And because he's the Lord of the church, he's the Lord of our lives. So he's either Lord of all or none at all. Okay. He's either Lord of all or Lord of none. All right. And so when we understand that he uh, is the head of our lives, he uh, is the head of the church. He uh, is the governing dynamic of how we live. The Apostle Paul said it's in him that we live, we breathe, and we have our being. Uh, it is when we understand that. That it shapes us. That God's word is non-binding. God's word uh, will be established even when we violate and break some of the principles ourselves. As we all have done. Uh, he is with us. He is an ever-present help 
in the time of trouble. And this is what gives us strength. And this is what gives us stability uh, as shifting tides and shaking comes because we are anchored and strengthened uh, and our hope is in God. Okay, so uh, we are to we are to come to understand who he is uh, because of blessed conduct. So uh, blessed is he whose way is blameless, who is undefiled in the way, who's undefiled in the way. And I want you to hear me tonight. Let's let's look at this. Psalm 119 verse number one, who's undefiled in the way. Okay, so when we talk about blessed conduct, blessed conduct, we hear about conduct. How do you conduct yourself? We oftentimes think about how we conduct ourselves in public. Uh, this pandemic has reminded us, uh, in case we have forgotten, uh, that it is not just how we have conducted ourselves in public, but also how we conduct ourselves in private. Uh, because prior to the pandemic, uh, our digital lives were a bit more private uh, than our public persona, uh, but now our private lives online are our public image and public uh, persona, uh, which is why we have to always be mindful of our conduct, always be mindful of how we communicate, always be mindful how we conduct ourselves, always be mindful of how we convey. My wife and I, when we were first getting married, uh, is, it, is this making sense so far? I'm looking for your responses. Uh, my wife, uh, when we were first getting married, uh, we made a uh, an agreement that we would we would be mindful of what we text each other so if there were certain conversations we just wouldn't text it we would just make sure we had them face to face because what we found is is that sometimes Horace, when we would text certain things it got lost in translation uh, so I, I would text it and she was like well you said X, Y, Z I'm like well that's what it says uh, but I didn't mean it that way <laughs> and so what we found is is that we had to become more intentional with how we conveyed and how we communicated. Does that make sense? Uh, and so it's the same way in our prayer time. It's the same way as we read scripture. We have to be uh, very intentional with how we uh, convey what we have received. We have to be very intentional with how we receive uh, and how we articulate that which God has done in and through our lives okay so so he says blessed are those whose way is blameless blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the lord so let's deal first of all with uh the ways uh that are blameless the undefiled in the way notice in the first clause here it says blessed are those whose way is blameless who walk in the law of the Lord. So our way must be blameless and our walk must be according to the laws of God, according to the word of God, according to uh, God's character, God's character, God's character. So when I see someone in need, uh, when I'm operating in the ways of the Lord, the laws of the Lord, I am called to minister and help to meet that need in the way that is suitable for that moment. Okay. Uh, when someone is down. I don't take a, a hammer and beat them down even more. I, I go to where they are. And I seek to uplift them. To strengthen them. When someone has fallen. Uh, Galatians tells us. Ye who are spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Uh, so there are certain characteristics. There are certain principles. There are certain ways. That we are to conduct ourselves as believers as disciples as christians and one of the challenges uh, and be very honest with you very frank with you tonight one of the challenges is that we're living in a society in a time in which so many uh, in the body of christ so many uh, who are supposed to embody godly conduct uh, have a desire to please the world have a desire to act like the world, hey, DJ. Have a desire to want to be like the world. Have a desire to want to fit in all the time. <clears throat> and what it does is, uh, it creates, it creates this disconnect because the world is hungry for the living bread, which means that we must be a people who are not trying to please everybody. Being a Christian. Being saved does not make you a people pleaser. I need to make that very clear. 
okay? It does not make you someone's doormat, okay? I remember when I was growing up and in school, I started preaching when I was very, very young. Uh, so I was still in grade school. And I remember when I was in junior high school, DJ, I was in DJ high school, and this guy said to me, you're a preacher, so that means you can't fight. And I said, that, that's not what it means. It just means I'm not trying to start something. Okay, and he kept on with that. Oh, you're a preacher. You're a preacher. So that means you can't do this. You're a preacher. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not held down to legalism. I'm not held down to legalism. Okay, I have made a decision to live my life a certain way. That doesn't mean that uh, if you just come at me, I'm not going to respond back to you. Now there were a lot of times when the Lord would tell me hold my peace, and in that moment it wasn't. And so He kept starting with me back at that time. This was years ago. Make it very personal. It's Bible study, so I'm just kind of sharing with you uh, practically. Uh, years ago, I was in think junior high school, something like that. And uh, I was boxing. I used to box. My, my dad was really pushing for me to do it. My grandfather was kind of hesitant. Uh, and uh, eventually I stopped uh, because they, they didn't want my face to get messed up preaching. And getting up preaching as a little kid with a black eye wasn't a cool thing. <laughs> so, uh, but I did like it. I did like it. I still have the stances now. And the guy kept badgering me. Elder Mers kept badgering me, badgering me, badgering me, badgering me in school. And uh, one day uh, he hit me. And I think he must have thought that I was going to just take it. Uh, and sometimes, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I did. Sometimes I didn't I didn't respond. I just, you know, somebody spit at me one time in school. I just, whatever. But that time, that was the day he needed to learn. Uh, and so he hit me, uh, and I handled him. And uh, I ended up getting detention. <laughs> it's the first and last time I ever got detention. And they didn't call my house or anything because I had always had pristine behavior. Ah, uh, Kevin. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't in 165. It was when I left 165. Uh, but but I, I hit him. And he was shocked. He was shocked. He was hurting, but he was shocked. And I knocked him around his neck. You know, and, and, and it was uh, because I was not going to accept the reality that being a Christian meant that you could walk all over me. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Catch these holy hand. Everybody understand? Being a Christian doesn't mean that you do a can just step all over you. Being a Christian doesn't mean that you have to stop everything and every time somebody asks you for a dollar, you have to give it to them because they think you're supposed to do it. There's a difference between being saved and also having someone that's trying to freeload off of you. And there's a difference. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? There's a difference. And so you have to be able to use wisdom to know when it is to do something, when it is to not do something, and how to govern yourself uh, therein and in that way. And that's that's what we're talking about. When we talk about discipleship, we talk about discernment, Asashiri, discernment is the ability to know how to govern yourself. It's to know how to govern yourself. It's to know how to govern yourself. So it is. you're not a monk. We're not saying that you have to be a martyr and someone just has to walk all over you. And all. No, 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 no. Uh, in fact, being saved, being a believer, being a disciple of Christ, it encourages you and it spurs you on to have a more inspired viewing point. And as a result of who you are in Christ, you now come to a greater awareness of what Christ has done for you. So you won't even allow people to belittle you in that way because you're lifting them up uh, as you lift Christ up. So I, I have an, a renewed understanding of who God has called me to be. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and so I, I want to encourage somebody in that because sometimes uh, people make the, the, the dangerous uh, assumption that because uh, you're a Christian, you have to capitulate to their needs and wants, and then they try to manipulate you in that way. I'm not sure who that's for, but I just really feel that to share that. And it's very important. No, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't have anything to prove to you. I'm not trying to prove myself to you. There has been a transformation. And you will know the transformation by the fruit that it bears. But that doesn't mean that I have to prove anything to you. I have nothing to prove. One of the most uh, encouraging things that my grandfather said to me years ago, and he'll, it'll be eight years and two weeks that he went on to be with the Lord. One of the most encouraging things he said to me, he said, son, don't compare yourself to anyone. Uh, secondly, don't, uh, he said, don't compare yourself and don't try to think that you're in competition with anyone. Be who God has called you to be and your gift will make room for you. Be who God's called you to be. Be who God has called you to be and understanding who he's called you to be, how he's wired you, how he's blessed you, 
who he's called you to be, how he's anointed you to be. I used to sometimes, years ago, I don't know why the Lord's leading me there, but I used to sometimes battle with my, my style of ministry because, you know, I started, as again, I started preaching when I was a real little kid. There's one of my uh, childhood friends here on here that uh, remembers when I'd be preaching in, in elementary school uh, <laughs> and all that. Uh, uh, started ministry really, 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 really young. And um, <clears throat> it was rough for me when I was, in my early years becomes, I used to feel bad uh, because some of my other preacher friends at the time, uh, they had a, a more charismatic uh, personality. And so when they stood up uh, and preached and ministered, people would just, they would just be drawn to them. I mean, they could get up and say fried chicken. Everybody's like, yes! You know, they didn't literally say that, but <laughs> give your face a break tonight. Amen. But they could just get up and, you know, they just had that magnetic personality. And when I first started preaching, uh, this is here. She might remember. When I first started preaching, I was very, 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 very nervous so I was doing crusades five night crusades at 10 11 years old and 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 sometimes I'd be shaking uh, I mean I would be shaking in the office uh, uh, riddled with just nerves and it took time <laughs> mother Williams is here it took time uh, for for me to become more comfortable uh, in the pulpit and so I remember I remember uh, getting ready to do a seven last words I had to be like really really and I'd be sitting there, and someone came to me and said, listen, they said, uh, all you have to do is be you. All you have to do is be you. And, and over time, the Lord began to show me that how he uniquely wired me was different from others and to appreciate. And guess what? When you come to understand how God has wired you, then you're able to appreciate the gifts in others. Why? Because you're not trying to be them. That's why we're a body. We're a body because what God is doing uniquely in you, he's doing uniquely in you, he's doing uniquely in you. And, and then when we come together, there are things that we can get accomplished together that we can never get accomplished apart. Uh, and so that's why godly conduct, blessed conduct is so important. So he says, blessed are those whose way is blameless. Blessed are those who are undefiled in the way. So, in a way, we see a high standard set forth. This is a high standard set forth. A high standard set forth, okay? Uh, Matthew 5 and 48 tells us, Be perfect, uh, be there for you perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Philippians 3 and 14 uh, says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, so this standard is achievable for us because we are walking according to the heart and the desire of pleasing God. Of pleasing God. Not people, but pleasing God. That it does not mean that does not mean that we're living uh, a rebellious life and being rogue and you know unaccountable and all. I'm not speaking that's that's nonsense. What I am saying is is that we have a desire to please Him. We have a desire to serve Him. We have a desire to worship Him. And that's why we have to treat each other in love and kindness. That's why we have to pray for those who are weak and pray for those who have fallen. And then in times, also nudge those and spur others on to good works. That's also important. Now, one, of the, one of the reasons why when you ever studied shepherds, I'm a pastor, and so when you study shepherds, you have, they had rods. They would give them rods, uh, and they would take the rods so that they could pull the sheep back in whenever they would go out over, over the fold or they would uh, get focused on something else or they would uh, get distracted they would get the rod and pull them back in uh, and that's what godly discipline does it pulls us back in it brings us back into alignment with the purposes of God with the desires of God and ultimately with the heart of God amen so almost there for tonight I uh, want to look at uh, let's look at Second Peter chapter 3, verse number 14. And it says there, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Okay? Walking, uh, Luke 1 and 6 says, Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. So that means that we are living to please him. 
living to honor him. Is God pleased with how we post? Is God pleased with how we communicate when nobody that we know of is watching? Is God pleased with how we articulate, how we treat our loved ones, how we treat our family? Is God pleased with that? You know, uh, my daughter turns uh, one years old tomorrow, and I was telling somebody that I said, my greatest joy now, uh, I, I, my prayer is the scripture that your children shall rise and call you blessed, and I believe that by faith. Uh, and, and my desire is to uh, model uh, compassion, to model uh, dignity, to model uh, honor, uh, so that my daughter sees in me uh, how she ought to be treated and how I treat her and how I treat her mother. Okay, uh, that is the order of God, uh, not just to uh, be this renowned and known preacher and teacher and all of that. Uh, and my home is just fragmented. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm moving very practically for a reason. Uh, we want to make sure that we honor God uh, where we are in our home in our lifestyle, in our practical living. So when we gather on Sundays, I said, Lord, today I'm preaching to you, building faith on Tuesdays is very practical. Uh, and we're just looking at practical application. Okay. Uh, understanding what God is doing and what he is saying in our lives. Last part of this verse, we're just touching verse number one, apparently. Last part of this verse, and I'll take some questions. Last part of this verse, who walk in the law of the Lord. This indicates ongoing action. The life of faith is a life of ongoing action. Please get that down. Someone uh, type that in for me. The life of faith is a life of ongoing action. Okay. We are walking with the Lord. Walking with the Lord. Spiritual formation takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It is not a one, two, three thing. It takes time walking with Christ, allowing the Lord to sanctify our imaginations, to sanctify our desires, to take the desires and the taste of this world out of us so that we're able to identify with who he is in us. It's a process. It's a process. It takes time. I often say that Rome uh, wasn't built in a day, but it was destroyed in one. It's easy to destroy something, but it takes time to build it. And so building your faith takes time. That's why being in corporate worship on Lord's Day on Sundays is so important. That's why gathering on Tuesdays as we study scripture and Bible study is so important. Uh, build your faith. That's why other corporate gatherings and even being in the word every day is so important. And I want to pause here for a moment because on our website we have made available uh, they're, they're right there. They're free. You can just download them. Matter of fact, one of the authors of the uh, PDF there told me just put it on your website for free to be a blessing to our ministry. If you if you really want to grow in scripture, uh, it, we have a daily reading plan with scriptures and a 30 day Psalms uh, plan that you can read every day. So if you wake up, you're like, I don't know what to, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Just go to our website, globalfirenow.com on the first page. And before you get even to the bottom, you can download those two documents there and you're able to walk through it. It gives you a prayer guide. Uh, if It shows you how to pray. Uh, it gives you a prayer guide for every day, a scripture for every morning, uh, and it walks you through a rhythm and a discipline of prayer. It is called the daily office. Uh, the ancient church fathers called it Lectio Divina. Uh, in the days ahead, as we're relaunching our global school of theology, one of the courses that we're going to be teaching on uh, is called Moments with the Master. Uh, how to feast on scripture, how to read scripture, uh, how to grow in scripture. Because one of the main questions I get is, well, how do I read the Bible? What should I, where do I start? And so that's why we're taking our time in the Psalms and giving you language for prayer in the Psalms. And this takes time. Life of faith is a life of ongoing action. We are walking with the Lord. And walking with the Lord is a slow process because we learn a lot about ourselves as a result okay moving forward i want to just touch a couple, two more things and then I'm going to, we're going to uh, open up for q a and then we're going to transition out okay so walking in the law of the lord this indicates ongoing action this indicates ongoing action secondly a walk is something that occurs one step after another one step after another one step 
after another. And in this pandemic, uh, this this afternoon I was doing some writing. My wife gave me the afternoon off, so I was doing some writing. I was writing, 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 writing some things. I'm preparing. I've got about three or four different book concepts. And <clears throat> I'm also finishing up my thesis for my grad work and all of that. So I was just writing, 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 writing. And the Lord's been dealing with me about something. I don't want to say the name of it yet because I'm I might touch on it Sunday. I'm not sure yet. But he was dealing with me about how to navigate this pandemic and, and how to minister and how the church needs to operate and how we need to walk in it. Uh, and I'll touch some more on that on Sunday. Um, and I was just sitting there in my coffee shop, my favorite coffee shop and my favorite chair in the coffee shop. And the Lord was just ministering to me, ministering to me, ministering to me, ministering to me. And what I've come to understand is this pandemic, we've got to really be Abrahamic. And what does that mean? When God called Abraham, Abraham did not know where he was going. God said to him, you're going to leave your home country in Genesis chapter 12, uh, and I'm going to show you where you are to go. He didn't know where he was going. He just had to take a step. And I believe that we're in a season right now, and I want you to hear me by the Spirit of God. I believe this is also for those of you who are, who are, worship, who are listening to us uh, right now. We're in a season now. We have to take it one step at a time. I don't know who that's for, but that's a word that I'm walking in right now. We have to take it one step at a time. One step at a time. I was in a program, uh, and I had to, uh, some particular program, I had to remove, I had to resign from it today, and it wasn't anything bad. Uh, but I understand that I can't have too many irons in the fire right now. I've got to be able to focus. I don't know who that's for, but God wants you to bring, wants to bring you into focus right now wants to bring us into focus uh, you don't focus on two or three things uh, five ten things two or three things uh, take it one step at a time matter of fact type that with me right now one step at a time god wants us to go one step at a time where is this thing going to end when are we going to be able to take our mask when are we going to be able to hang out when are we going to be able to do it? i, I want to go super Bowl. i want one step at a time one step at a time one step at a time. Come on, let me see you type it. One step at a time. One step at a time. Come on, church. One step at a time. And watch the Lord slowly, over time, begin to reveal what is needed now. Not tomorrow. Not next month. Not next year. And listen, this was a tough one for me, Sister Ray, because I'm a five, ten year person. I plot out things 10 years. I'm, I'm a decade to decade guy. That's how I live. Uh, when I was, when we were starting global, I told my mother, I said, okay, I'm going to give myself a decade uh, to see how we go. And if we're able to get it here, then I'll, I'll make adjustments. X, Y, and Z. I'm a decade to decade guy. That's how I live. But this season has reminded me. Let's bring it down. One step at a time. One step. There you go, saints. I see you saying it one step at a time to pause to pray to listen to adhere to what god ongoing action ongoing action this indicates ongoing action a walk is something that occurs one step at a time it does not cease. It does not cease. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joys we share as we tarry there, no other uh, has ever known. Uh, there, there's, there's such, I come to the garden alone. It's a beautiful hymn. He walks with us one step at a time, one step at a time. And it doesn't cease. Okay, uh, we're going to go, we're going to close uh, with these uh, three scriptures. First, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 6. Deuteronomy has really been blessing me in my personal time with God. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. I always say if I could ever uh, preach it, how I really hear it when I'm in prayer, I'd be doing something serious, boy, I tell you. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 6, okay. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 6. I'm going to give you two more scriptures after that, and I'm going to open up for Q&A. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 6. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in His ways and by fearing Him. Keep the commandments of the Lord your God by what? Walking in His ways. Walking in His ways 
and fearing him. Okay. Second scripture, Colossians chapter 2, verse number 6. If you want this broadcast to be available, if you want to review, it'll be available. We leave everything up for you so that you're able to have it uh, free of charge. It is for the blessing of the body of Christ. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9. Let me see. Yeah, Colossians chapter 2. Uh, and we're going to look at verse number 6. All right. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 6. Here we go. All right. All right. <clears throat> As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Verse number 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Colossians 2, 6 through 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him. So as I'm walking one step at a time, I'm living my life in him. I'm living my story in his. Did you catch that? We're living our story in him. It is in him that we live and have our being. Paul says here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, and here's the Spirit of God uh, as, as he's writing this. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives. Continue to walk in him. Continue to walk in him. Continue to walk in him. I like how the old King James says it. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So we are to walk in him. To walk in his steps. I'll give you a perfect illustration for it. Earlier today, I was walking through that snow. Oh, dear God. If you don't live in the city, God bless you. But I was walking through that snow, and I live on the island, so the snow is just through the, I mean, good Lord, and I'm a big guy, and I'm, well, ways, I'm trying to press through, <coughs> stepping through, and all of this, and, and where I was walking, there were no footprints, uh, but then I saw some giant prints ahead of me, and I got excited, because now I can just put my foot in those prints, and I was able to follow those prints my Lord have mercy, to get to the end of the journey, to get where I needed to go. We are able to follow the Lord because his word is our blueprint. Are you following what I'm saying? His word is our blueprint. And as we take that step, as we walk step by step, we're able to grow in the fullness of what he has ordained. I wanted to bring it down the night so that we're able to have understanding, so that we're able to grow. Last scripture. Third John, one of my favorites. Third John. Is this blessing you? Is this making sense? Please let me see your responses. Third John. Now I'm finishing with this. Third John. Third John. Uh, there's, there's the epistles of John. The gospel of John. And then Revelation, which was also authored by John. Third John 1 and 4. One of my favorite scriptures is this is one of the major scriptures that I always pray for those connected to our, my ministry, the ministry that God's given us to our ministry. Uh, and that's from 3 John 1 and 4. I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Uh, Apostle John is writing to his church there. I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Uh, those who I have raised up in the Lord, those who I have preached and taught to and ministered to, that they are walking in the truth of the word of God, walking in the fullness of what God has said, not in error, but in what he has promised. So we want to, we're going to stop right there. Uh, I believe that we have uh, done some significant work here uh, in uh, verse number one. We're going to continue uh, in verse number two uh, and three uh, next week, and we're going to work our way through these first eight verses uh, as we begin to move. Uh, any questions? Any questions? I want to take some questions. Any questions or any feedback at this time? Any questions or any feedback at this time? Okay. All right. All right. Any questions? Amen. Any questions? Any questions? Amen. Any feedback? Praise God. All right. Looks like okay. So, looks like everyone is at peace. Amen. All right. So, uh, again, we want you to review Psalm 119. Uh, we want to make sure 
uh, that we are ready for, uh, that we are praying through it, that we have clarity as it pertains to that, uh, and so that we're able to uh, move forward in what God has promised and ordained. All right. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so let's pray together. Father, we thank you uh, for what you're doing and what you're continuing to do. We ask that you would continue to guide us, that you would continue to lead us, that you would continue to bring us into what you have promised and what you have ordained. We thank you for the privilege of relationship. We thank you for what you have said. And we thank you for what you have done. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. The Lord bless you tonight. The Lord keep you as our prayer. I pray that you have been edified, that you have been encouraged, that you have been exhorted as we grow in Scripture. Godly conduct, blessed conduct, one step at a time. Listen, if you would like to be a blessing and just uh, give a free will offering, we will receive a free will offering at this time. If you were blessed by tonight's teaching and you want to just be blessing to the ministry, you can do so uh, very simply. Uh, if you have cash app, you can dollar sign Global Fire Now. Global Fire Now. I'm going to ask our digital ambassadors if you put the giving options available. Uh, global Fire Now. Uh, also, you can text the word Global, G L O B A L. G L O B A L to 51400. Uh, also, we have Zelle. You can Zelle at globalfirenow.com. And lastly, uh, we have uh, PayPal, which you can also do on our website, globalfirenow.com. These are all ways uh, that we can give, that we can be a blessing to the work of God. Again, tonight I pray that you are blessed by Bible study. I pray that God's hand will continue to cover you. And I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing and what you are saying. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, uh, you know our ways to give. Uh, Cash app, dollar sign, Global Fire Now, Zell, Global Fire Now, gmail.com. Text Global to 51400 or our PayPal, GlobalFireNow.com. God bless you all. I love you all. Thank you so much for your love. Uh, thank you so much for working with us. Be encouraged. Be blessed. Have a great night and get sweet rest in Jesus' name. Global is who we are, fires what we bring, uh, ministries what we do. Expect greater. God bless you. See you later. Bye-bye.